Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to ProLine, the longest-running sports handicapping show in America. I'm John Cranton in Las Vegas, joined by Jeff Saad, who runs Las Vegas Sports Services. We're going to take a look at some NBA teams that are the best of the West, the big four in the West. That's also going to tie in to another game we're going to look at, which is Thursday's big showdown between San Antonio and Oklahoma City. First, we're also going to take a look at some spread trends and who to look at over or under the total and some of those big four weaknesses. Uh, first, uh, Jeff, you're off that dynamite college basketball run in March, 18-8 and eight in NCAA tournament play, and you had a very good start to the NBA season on Monday. Well, good start to the MLB season. MLB season, right. I was 4-0 right, on Monday, 2-0 in the NBA, and 2-0 in uh, Major League Baseball. Right now, you're going to get the entire month of April. That's going to be NBA baseball plus the final four in uh, the NCAA tournament and the title game. Off for a total of only twenty-five dollars. Just call LBSS at one eight six six five seven five eight nine one six. That's the entire month. It's going to be, of course, it's going to include the beginning of the NBA playoffs plus college basketball and uh, and all of baseball. Uh, twenty-five bucks. Call LBSS one eight six six five seven five eight nine one six. All right, and reminding you that Mr. Vegas is off a high roller wipeout winner with Kentucky in the in the uh, Final Four or the Elite Eight, and he also has uh, his Final Four game on tap at JimFice.com. Plus, if you want to get the rest of baseball in April and basketball for 19 bucks, just call his office as one eight six six eight nine six sixteen twenty seven. All right, let's take a look at the Big Four in the Western Conference, which has really had some strong talent and teams this season. you got the Spurs, Thunder, the Clippers, and the Rockets competing for the one to four seeds right now. And of course, Jeff, the San Antonio Spurs are the hottest team uh, we've seen in quite a while. How do they shape up? Well, I think they learned a lesson last year. Uh, remember last year during the regular season, they had a Thursday night national televised game against the Miami Heat, and Popovich inexplicably rested his starters. Uh, he got fined $250,000 by the league for doing that. Also, it was a, a ridiculous strategic move because look what happened. Uh, that was that game was a big factor, and the Spurs not getting the best record in the league. And they had a, in the NBA Finals, they go to, have to go to Miami up 3-2, and of course they lose the last two games on the road. So I think that so I think this year they're not. Going going to slow down. They're going to uh, go uh, full bore for that uh, top record in the league this year, so that uh, they're not going to be a go-against team very often the rest of the season. Uh, they beat Indiana by 26 points on the road uh, Monday night. They beat Denver by 31 on the road. Uh, they have nine players averaging at least 18 minutes per game, which has a lot to do with the Spurs 8-3 and three against the spread mark uh, the last 11 games, playing with no rest. Uh, so right now, the three games up for the best record in the league, and I don't see them slowing down much, and I would not go against this team. I'd be very careful going against this team the rest of the season, John. Yeah, they certainly got healthy and have a tremendous depth and utilize it. Also, keep in mind, as good as they are defensively, when they allow 100 points or more in a game, they're tremendous against the spread the next game, 37-18 and 1 ATS. All right, I'm going to take a look at the, the second-place team right now in the West. That's the Oklahoma City Thunder. And uh, this team really has it all. They've got depth. They've got role players. They've got star power. They've got balance. And you can see that with their home road breakdown, which is one thing to look at when you analyze these NBA teams. Great at home, as many teams are, 31-7. and seven, But they've won twice as many on the road as they've lost a 23-12 and 12 start away from home, which is very impressive. Uh, an underrated defensive team. We all know about how great their offense is. Fifth in the NBA in scoring, sixth in rebounds. They're also number two in free throws, which is a sizzling 80%. So if a game is close, you can't uh, hack a shack of this team. And their defense, too, is surprisingly under the radar. They allow 0.43% shooting defensively. That's number three in the entire NBA, and it's tops in the West. We know about the star power, but I'm going to talk about the uh, the role players that they have. Serge Ibaka kind of been a role player in the past, but he's kind of blossoming as a star now. 15 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, 2.59 blocks. They have a couple of guys, a young Reggie Jackson, a point guard, 23-year-old kid, 13.3 points per game. They have a veteran player they picked up in the Karan Butler who has been injured, but he's starting to play now, and he's playing pretty well. For a 34-year-old guy, over 10 points per game. He had a big game against Denver when he was 3 of 7 from long range and 10 of 19 uh, from the field. And they are, the Oklahoma City Thunder are on a hot run, particularly at home, 5-1-2 and two against the spread. And their defense, which I mentioned earlier, 
Very good at home, 5-1 and one under the total at home. They had a big win Sunday over Utah, absolutely blew them out. And it was significant because Durant topped 25 points. He had 31 points, 9 assists. But that's a 38th straight game that he's had more than 25 points. He's within two now of Michael Jordan's record, which is set back in the 86-87 season. We're going to see him on tap Thursday against the San Antonio Spurs. I wonder if they'll try and double and triple team him uh, to stop that record. Probably not, although they'll be more interested in a victory. Uh, and finally, this defense is just so impressive. I, I can see a team like this. I really don't see any weaknesses uh, so I think they deserve to be the number one or two seed in the West. I don't see them faltering at all down the stretch, and I think they are a legitimate contender to make it back to the NBA Finals where they were just uh, two years ago. All right, Jeff, the uh, team that's in the number three position is the L.A. Clippers. Uh, tremendous offense, but do they have the defense uh, and experience to make a postseason run? Well, two years ago they lost in the first round to Memphis in the playoffs, and, and they thought the problem was they didn't have enough depth. Last year they got more depth, but then then they lost in the second round. Uh, they got swept by the Spurs. This team is like uh, open. They, they play a wide open offense during the regular season, more finesse style. But when the playoffs come, it's more physical, more half court slowdown, and they don't they can't seem to handle that very well. And that's going to be the question going into this year's playoffs. Uh, they're 42-32 against the spread overall. They're undervalued on the road of whether they're 24-14 against the spread. They lead the lead with 107.6 points per game. But as I said, that might not mean much come playoff time because they're going to have to adjust uh, a little, at least, a, what, you know, to the playoff style basketball because and, and when that comes when you play in a team uh best of seven it's a whole different ball game so that's going to be the problem with the clippers they're uh they have the talent there's no question about that but uh, i'm not sure if they can go far in the playoffs uh for the same reasons that they didn't go far the last couple of years john yeah, I like the defensive improvement that uh, the new coach, Doc Rivers, has brought to the team. But the one area of weaknesses that I see with them, which could be huge in the postseason, is free throws. They're awful, 26 in the NBA. And uh, that is, this is a team that's flamed out in recent playoff, particularly last year when they were bounced in the first round. And I can see, wouldn't be surprised if that's happened again. Another team that is just awful from the free throw line uh, is the Houston Rockets. They're currently in the num number four position, but... Uh, I'm down on this team. First of all, look at the home road breakdown. Great at home, 29 and 8, but not that great on the road, 20 and 15. I think that's a result of defense not being outstanding. Teams that aren't, aren't great on defense can have problems on the road. And here's a team that dealing with injury concerns right now. The big one is Dwight Howard resting his ankle for a week. So it's hard to see this team getting better in the standings in the uh, competitive West. Uh, without him and then the point guard pad beverly uh, got some good news on his knee this week but he still has a torn meniscus uh, and that's a concern and then the free throws i mentioned boy this team is just awful 29th in the nba in free throw shooting and that's what happens wherever dwight howard goes that he brings the free throw numbers down just to put it in perspective his career free throw numbers 57 percent well he's worse this year 55 percent so at age 28 he should be in his prime no he's getting worse from the line and and that's something that is detrimental to teams i remember when they went to the finals against the lakers boy his free throw shooting was terrible and then when they got to the eastern conference finals the next year they were home they were favored against boston yet they fell behind three games to none it wasn't just howard the team was terrible in close games and free throw lines which which put him in that hole don't don't overlook free throw shooting, particularly in the postseason when you're likely to have a lot of close games. These are two weaknesses that the Clippers and the Rockets in particular have, which could hurt them. Uh, and finally, their defense isn't that bad as far as field goal shooting defense, but other than Howard, there's really no stoppers on the team. And one of the guys that they use recently is a Chandler Parsons. He's 25 year old. He's 6'9". So he's a he's big guy in the front court who can be thrown at other teams' big scorers, but they tried that last week against Kevin Durant. Durant torched him for 42 points. So there's really no defensive stoppers that this team can rely on. And it may not rear its head during the regular season, but that is, will be a concern, I think, in the postseason. Uh, Houston Rockets currently on a 1-4 and four ATS run on the road. They're also on a 7-1 and one run over the total as they look to run and gun at teams and sometimes uh, play lax defense. 